man of science has learned to believe in justification, not by faith, but by verification. This is a quote from Thomas Huxley, an English biologist and comparative anatomist, known as Darwin Bulldog for his advocacy of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. He was the first to open the debate on the classification of Dinosauria, the terrible laser, named coined by Sir Richard Owen in 1842. In 1869, Huxley the first portrayed a comes and nails with feathers, suggesting a systematic group called Ornithocelida, literally, bird like food. This group contained both Ornithischian dinosaurs, like Iguanodon and Solidosaurus, both theropod dinosaurs, like Megalosaurus and Comstognathus. As maybe you know, today dinosaurs are divided into major groups the Sauratia and the Ornithischia. Sauritian dinosaurs are those that share an evolutionary ancestor the head of pubis that extend downwards and forwards toward the rib cage. Ornithischian dinosaurs are those that share an evolutionary ancestor that had both a special beak forming bone in the upper jaw called the predentary and a pubis that extends downwards and backwards toward the tail. In 1887, Henry Seeley proposed the division based on the nature of the pelvic bones and joints. He had the merit to bring order between orders. At that time, in fact, the paleontologist and fossil hunter Edward Drinker Cook had formulated a classification based on the relationship between the bones of the ankle in relation to the tibia and fibula. Combining some external features, he had identified four orders Achillosaurus, Stegosaurus, and Hadrosaurus were identified like a unique group called ornithopods. The newly discovered giant long neck herbivores in a group called Opistocoelia. The small carnivores, like in Pixum Gnatus there, called allopods, and the bigger gonipods. Also, his rival, Hotnia Charles Marsh, had proposed a classification, which, however, considered other characteristics. Psychosauria, Ornithopoda, Sauropoda and Theropoda were the taxonomic names respectively for hammer dinosaurs, for large bipedal herbivores, for gigantic brontosaurs and finally for the carnivores. These terms are still used to identify for suborder. The work done by Seeley is therefore the result of the effective synthesis of finding for that period, but unfortunately limited to the specimen discovered at that time. And despite what Shakira think, maybe their hips don't lie, but they create misunderstandings. So, birds are descendants from this group. Birds are part of theropods, so birds are not bird dinosaurs. Furthermore, another complication is the common ancestor with each other. And we are not sure what this ancestor was like whether he had more Hornetitian or Thoritian traits. This classification over time expanded and the tail with new clade and suborders like prosauropods, an early group of sauropods and the first group of large bodies herbivores dinosaurs to evolve, and Marzinocephalia with the ceratopsian dinosaurs that have large parrot like beaks and skulls that are greatly expanded in the rear, and Pachycephalosauria that have teeth, dumb, skull, roof and backward pointing urns. That's all clear? Any question? Oh yes, obviously. From yesterday, everything has changed. An article published in the journal Nature by Matthew Brown, David Norman and Paul Barrett from University of Cambridge and the Natural History Museum of London, called Save the Queen, examined a very large number of anatomical characters of 74 fossil species, analyzing a total of 35,000 data. Using a classical method of analysis of anatomical features, paleontologists have come to very different conclusions from those of colleagues that precede them. In particular, they determined that theropods are not Sauritia, but they should be within the large group of Ornithischia. Early Ornithischians share with early theropods a esteem in the upper jaw, a region of the maxilla and nearly 20 other characters. This study has found a sister group relationship between Ornithischian and Theropoda, creating a nuclei named Ornithocelida. 
Baron and colleagues used this opportunity to create a formal definition for axially holding, with sauropodomorpha and rhodosauridus as the redefined saurischia forming its monophyletic outer group. The fact that herodosaurus and theropods, but carnivores and no longer relatives, showed that the diet for meat was evolving in this group independently. Maybe this can explain the doubt Holbrook raised concerning herodosaurus, especially as regarding the neutral pubic bone. Another conclusion drawn by British paleontologists is that the very first dinosaurs were small and equipped with hand grasping, and maybe they were born in the northern hemisphere a few years earlier than previously thought, which is about 247 million years ago. Some paleontologists also think that the feathers character are just evolved over Ornithoscheida, so theropods and Ornithischia. Indeed, so a long-standing doubt about why only the theropods had feathers inside the Saurischia. Only diverging Ornithischia and Heterodontosaurids, small bipedal herbivores that show a covering of quick-like filaments, find an explanation into the integumentary structure possessed by theropods. The beauty of this science is that despite studying creatures esteemed for millions of years, can change the conception that we currently have of phylogenetic evolution of existing species. Just consider birds. This is a very interesting analysis, but must be confirmed by subsequent studies that expand the database of fossil examinate. Many doubts remain to solve, as the lack of skeletal pneumatity in onetitians. Thanks for watching and continue to discover.